This is TNN, the Nashville Network. Coming up on Moto World, a look back at all the racing action of the past season. Women's Motocross headlines the CMC Multinationals in California. And Moto World takes you behind the scenes to a secret tire testing session with a Suzuki road race team. Moto World is next. to you by Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. Honda motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles. Honda, follow the leader. Nissan, who invites you to test drive the new Go Anywhere Nissan Pathfinder at your Nissan dealer now. Fram Autolite, the makers of Fram oil filters and Autolite spark plugs. Suzuki, makers of the 1987 Quad Runners. Right on, Suzuki. And by Castrol, motor oil engineered for today's smaller, higher revving engines. I'm Larry Myers, and welcome to Motor World's first edition on the Nashville Network. Motor World is pleased to join TNN's Sports Sunday lineup and to add the exciting world of motorcycling to your weekend viewing. Veterans of Motor World might have noticed our new look for 1987. Well, let me quickly add the change is not just cosmetic. We have expanded our facilities both on the set and in the field to bring you the best motorcycle news and racing highlights available. And speaking of highlights, we thought we'd highlight the 86 racing season to give our new viewers a sampling of what Moto World is all about. First up is road racing, and at our new correspondence desk is Moto World's managing editor, Dennis Torres, with a road racing season in review. Larry, for the first time in U.S. road racing history, there was a single national champion in 1986. Eligible for the inaugural title were riders competing in the production-based superbike class and on the exotic Grand Prix machines known as Formula One. The first ever Camel Pro Road Race Championship went down to the final race of the year with a familiar face reigning supreme. His name is Flying Fred Merkel, young, blonde, Californian, and most important, the king of superbikes. Merkel and his Honda Interceptors have dominated superbike road racing over the past three seasons. In 1984 and 85, Merkel was victorious in 16 of 25 scheduled races. Hugh doubted the 23-year-old would slow his pace in 1986. The Fountain Valley Californian resident won two races and finished in the top three in the other seven. For the 86th season, Merkel traded all-out speed for season-long consistency. His new strategy worked. In fact, it enabled him to win not only the Superbike title for the third year in a row, but the inaugural Camel Pro Road Racing National Championship as well. Merkel's toughest competition came from his 25-year-old Honda teammate and fellow Californian Wayne Rainey. Number one Merkel and Rainey number six battled throughout the nine race championship series, Rainey winning an impressive six times. Rainey's championship hopes were dashed by his choice of tire compounds in two critical races. In the opening round, the prestigious Daytona 200, Rainey suffered from continuous tire problems the whole day after battling for the lead in the early going. Then, in the crucial penultimate round in Ohio, Rainey again suffered tire maladies, which eventually caused this off-road excursion. That was the turning point in the Superbike and Camel Pro National Championships. Both titles would be decided at the final round in Atlanta. The championship equation was simple. For Rainey to win the overall Camel Pro title, he had to win and hope Merkel finished third or worse. For Merkel to win the Superbike class title, he only had to finish in the top 13. In the end, in high heat and humidity, Rainey took the win with Merkel right behind. Merkel had won both the Superbike and Camel Pro national championships. Third in the Camel Pro Road Racing Championship was Formula One champion number 96, Randy Renfro. 
the Virginia Ryder put in a consistent season to take the title in the next to last round in Ohio. Renfro will go down in the record books as the last American Formula One champion. The powers at B eliminated the series at the end of the season, citing the high cost of running F1 machinery. Looking back at American road racing in 1986, two things stick out. The first ever overall Camel Pro National Championship and the demise of Formula One racing. Reporting for Motor World, this is Dennis Torres. Dennis, Fred Merkel has been king of American road racing for the past three years. What are his plans for 1987? Well, reports from Europe have flown Fred off to the World Championship Grand Prix Wars. Nothing has been signed yet, but negotiations are in progress. We'll keep abreast of the situation in weeks to come. Still to come, Moto World goes behind the scenes to a secret testing session in preparation for the Daytona 200. We'll look back at the year in outdoor motocross and the exciting world of supercross. And coming up next, a review of the Camel Pro Dirt Track Series Championship. Moto World will be right back. I told her Suzuki invented quad runners for everybody. She said, who cares? <laughs> hey, look, you want her to come out here? You just tell her that riding a Suzuki quad runner is like skiing, only uphill. It's like windsurfing without the wind. It's more fun than a roller coaster. It's like flying without leaving the ground. I'd tell her it'd be more fun if she stayed home. <laughs> right on, Suzuki. Nissan announces the best deal ever on this 87 hard body truck. A $630 value plus package with top custom bumper. She's sliding rear window. Dual outside mirrors. And a lot more at no extra charge. Then add in our 3.9% factory sponsored financing. Depending on the model you choose and length of contract, you could save over $1,400. That's a ton of money. And a lot of truck. So hurry down to your Nissan dealer now and drive home our best deal ever. They wait, they stalk, and they shake the desert sands, all teamed together to do one thing, win. Bill Elliott and his Coors Melling Thunderbird, Tom the Mongoose McEwen and his Coors Funny Car, and Ivan the Iron Man Stewart's Coors Off-Road Champion. When the smoke clears, Coors is the one. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol, the only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. Some veteran observers feel the combination of a motorcycle and a dirt oval is the purest form of motorcycle racing. For the past two years, one rider has dominated those dirt ovals. His name is Bubba Schobert. Ari Landrum reports on the Team Honda Riders' second straight championship season. It will be hard for Team Honda's Bubba Schobert to top the season he had in 1986. On the way to his second straight series crown, Schobert won a record nine of 22 national championship races. His six wins on the high-speed mile ovals, also a single-season record, raised the 24-year-old's career mile win total to 19. Schobert now has a grand total of 24 career Camel Pro Dirt Track Series victories. That puts him third on the all-time career dirt track win list. His victory at the Phoenix Half Mile was yet another historic mark for the Team Honda rider. Schobert now joins the elite company of Dick Mann and Kenny Roberts as only the third rider to have won at all five of the Camel Pro disciplines. The Mile, Half Mile, TT Steeplechase, Short Track, and Road Racing. Despite these achievements, Team Honda Schobert had to work for his crown. In fact, after the first race of the season, he didn't even show up in the series standings. But in the next three races, Schobert racked up a victory and two second place finishes. After the fourth race of the season, he was first in the standings and on his way. Only once in 86 did his championship challengers get close to him in the standings. 
Schobert's eighth place at the June New Orleans Mile, his worst finish of the season, allowed Harley-Davidson Scott Parker to move into a tie with Schobert at the top of the standings. Parker's moment in the sun did not last long. In the next three races, Schobert whipped off two wins and a second. After that, Schobert was in the driver's seat till the end of the season. Schobert either won or finished in the top three 16 times in 22 races. Number 11, Scott Parker, upheld Harley-Davidson's colors in 1986 and finished the season second in the final standings. It marked the fifth consecutive year Parker had ended up ranked in the top five. Two national wins in 86 gave the Michigan native a career total of 11 dirt track wins. Parker also added to a personal record, a career record, five second place finishes in the San Jose Mile. Despite his consistency at San Jose, Parker has yet to taste victory at the California track. Third place series finisher Doug Chandler, number 10, turned in the stretch drive of the season. Chandler, riding a Honda back by former road racing world champion Freddie Spencer, ranked fifth in the standings with three races remaining. The former rookie of the year turned up the wick and scored two wins and a second place, which vaulted the Californian to his best series finish in four seasons. After all is said and done, the 86 Camel Pro season will be remembered for the dominant display put in by Team Honda's Bubba Schobert. His record-breaking season must now rank him as one of the all-time dirt track greats. Reporting for Motor World, this is Ari Landrum. Camel Pro dirt track racing is also the subject of this week's Fram Autolite flashback. Here's Dave Bowman with another memorable moment in motorcycle racing brought to you by Fram Autolite. For defending Camel Pro Series champion Ricky Graham number one, the battle to hold on to his title had been harder than winning it. Now the series final race in Pontiac, Michigan Silverdome, the 25-year-old Graham needed a small miracle to retain his crown. Number six, Michigan's Randy Goss was in command of the point standings. Goss, the 1980 Camel Pro champion, needed to finish 14th or better and the title would be his. Goss nearly gave Graham the miracle he needed by crashing in his qualifying heat race. The 27-year-old Goss was up quickly and fought valiantly to finish in third and earn a spot in the national final. Graham's strategy on the national was simple. Win the race and let Lady Luck sort out the rest. Graham made his move early and decisively, and once in the lead, the race belonged to the Californian. Meanwhile, Goss battled traffic on the rough TT track for an eighth-place finish. It was good enough to take the crown. While Graham took the victory lap with the checkered flag, Goss was congratulated for winning the title. Graham had won the battle, but the war and the number one plate belonged to Randy Goss, the 1983 Camel Pro Champion. For Motor World, this is Dave Bowman reporting. And now, Nissan presents the Nissan Scoreboard, a statistical look at the world of motorcycle racing. The Career Camel Pro Series money winners are headed up by none other than reigning dirt track champ Bubba Schobert. His total does not reflect his salary and bonuses from Honda, which should easily put him in the millionaire's tax bracket. Reigning Supercross champ Ricky Johnson had a super year in 1986 with six wins, but he still falls way short in career wins to the legend Bob Hurricane Hanna. In superbike road racing, three-time series champ Fred Merkel tops the list of career wins. Second place man Wayne Rainey could be the only rider on the list competing on a superbike in 1987. When Moto World returns, we'll turn our attention to motocross. The 1986 season featured some of the best action in years. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on the Nashville Network. I told her Suzuki invented quad runners for everybody. She said, who cares? <laughs> hey, look, you want her to come out here? You just tell her that riding a Suzuki quad runner is like skiing, only uphill. It's like windsurfing without the wind. It's more fun than a roller coaster. It's like flying without leaving the ground. I'd tell her it'd be more fun if she stayed home. <laughs> <laughs> right on Suzuki. These Nissan hard body trucks are the most specially equipped in Nissan history because now they come with 3.9% factory sponsored financing or up to $800 cash back from Nissan. 3.9 or $600 cash back built into the only leading import truck with V6 power and standard 5 speed. Or you can save up to $1,300 and drive away in this King Cab SE 4x4. Nissan hard body trucks with 3.9% financing or up to $800 cash back. But hurry, this is the kind of special equipment everybody can use. 
Daytona International Speedway, the birthplace of speed, home of America's most important motorcycle race, the Daytona 200. The 45th annual version of motorcycle racing's most prestigious event was the most competitive in years. For the first time, factory efforts from the Japanese motorcycle giants, Honda, Suzuki, and Yamaha were entered for a head-to-head -head confrontation. In qualifying, Yamaha's world champion Eddie Lawson stole the show, putting his FZ750 Superbike on pole position with a new track record. As 80 riders took the green flag for the big race, the question remained, could Lawson's rocket-fast Yamaha endure the punishment and torture of the Daytona 200? The answer, as far as his competitors were concerned, was a demoralizing yes. Yamaha had added to their Daytona legacy. 14 of the last 15 Daytona 200 Classics have been won by Yamaha. Welcome back to Moto World. California fans recently had a taste of just about every type of motocross action at an event appropriately called the Multinationals. The festivities were highlighted not only by variety, but a woman's touch as well. The CMC Multinationals had classes for nearly everyone, except this four-legged wonder. Want to take a friend for a ride? Try the side hack class. These specially built racers can really put on a show, and while the driver sort of takes it easy, his passenger or monkey works for his ride. You can't win if you're lying on the ground, as Donnie Schmidt found out in the 125cc Pro class. There was plenty of close racing, but when the results were tallied, it was Californian Mike Craig, number 3C, the overall 125 winner. The booming sounds of the four-stroke class machinery is music to just about everyone. The sweetest music on this day was played by number 15, Terry Tinney, whose consistency earned him the victory. While most of the machinery is vintage, the racing isn't. Women's motocross gets more popular with each season. Why? The answer is simple. The men. I mean, why go to singles bar when you got them all out here on Sunday? On the track, the 125cc women's pro class belonged to Mercedes Gonzalez. The 23-year-old from Arlita, California, showed why she carries the number one plate by sweeping both motos. Um, I think my favorite part about racing women's motocross is, is just to see all the girls out there trying. Uh, I remember when I was just starting and just trying to get on top, and it's just neat to see them all trying, and it's a really good atmosphere. One of the biggest reasons women's motocross is on the rise is Mercedes Gonzalez. The 23-year-old rider is not only a popular ambassador for the sport, but a consistent winner as well. For her performance at the multinationals, Mercedes Gonzalez is our Castrol Rider of the Week. Mercedes will receive a custom-embroidered racing jacket from Castrol, as well as a commemorative plaque for being named the Castrol Rider of the Week. If you would like to nominate a Castrol Rider of the Week, drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Watch for our address at the end of the show. Unlike dirt track or road racing, motocross continues to produce a multitude of national champions. Whether it was outdoor motocross, stadium supercross, or Grand Prix competition, the 86 championship ranks read like a who's who of motocross. In the 11 race 125 national championship series, five riders on four different brands of motorcycles shared winning honors. The most consistent of the five was first year Honda rider number 43, Mickey Diamond from Yorba Linda, California. En route to the 125 title, Diamond won three events and finished second four times. In the 250 class, the race for the title turned into a rout. Team Honda's Rick Magic Johnson won four of the five races in the series. At the series finale at Denver, Colorado, the El Cajon native needed only a 12th place finish to wrap up the championship. But as Johnson later said, 12th place would be like kissing your sister. Johnson took the win and the 1986 250 championship. A series-long battle between Rick Johnson, number five, and David Bailey, number six, highlighted the chase for the 500cc title. Going into the final round at Washougal, Washington, Bailey had scored three wins and Johnson two. Only seven points separated the Honda teammates. That seven points, though, was enough. When the Washougal dust was settled, David Bailey had claimed the 500 title by a six-point margin. The Supercross Series was another Rick Johnson-David Bailey war. Between them, the Honda teammates won 10 of the 11 races in the series. 
Had it not been for this Rick Johnson crash while in the lead at Houston, they would have won all 11. When the final points were tabulated, Johnson, with six Supercross wins, was the champion. The most popular motocross win of the year went to Bob Hurricane Hanna. The Team Suzuki rider had often stated that the Unadilla US 250 Grand Prix was the one race that he wanted to win more than any other. In the twilight of his brilliant career, the Hurricane got that win. Making it two for two for American riders in U.S. Grand Prix motocross competitions, Rick Johnson won the 500cc event at Carlsbad, California. En route to the win, the Team Honda rider easily captured both motos and led an American sweep of the first three places. In motocross team competition, the U.S. squad of Johnny O'Mara, Rick Johnson, and David Bailey captured the motocross de nation's title for the sixth year in a row. In beating the best that Europe had to offer, the U.S. team took first and second in every moto and won all three classes. The dominance displayed at Motocross de Nations was a reflection of the 1986 U.S. Motocross Series. Rick Johnson was the dominant rider, Honda captured every championship, and was the dominant team. exciting new shows and specials to the Nashville Network. Premiering in January, veteran fishing guide and author Billy Westmoreland offers practical advice and how-to tips on Billy Westmoreland's fishing diary. Then cast off of the pros and travel the tournament trail as top anglers compete for big money when the Bassmasters returns to TNN Sports Sunday. And more good news for fishing fans. Now those fascinating articles from In Fisherman Magazine come to life on the new action-packed in Fisherman's Angling Adventures. You'll witness a dream come true for Willie Nelson as we take you on the set of his upcoming movie. Don't miss the exclusive interviews, dramatic action from the film, and of course, Willie's music in the special, The Making of the Red-Headed Stranger. Then, judge the talent of horse and rider in two of the equine world's most prestigious performance events on America's Horse. It all happens in January on the Nashville Network. Here's an interesting item from the In the Wind column in Cycle News. Two-time dirt track champ Ricky Graham could be trading in his steel shoe for some road racing leathers. Cycle News reports Graham is thinking of going superbike racing in 1987 on a privately entered Kawasaki. Graham's last road race was the 1986 Daytona 200 where he failed to finish due to a crash. And speaking of America's most important road race, the Daytona Classic is only two months away. During the winter, the Speedway has been the site of extensive tire testing in preparation for the big race. Let's go behind the scenes with Coors to one of those test sessions which are usually close to the public and the press. Dennis Torres reports. Early morning, the garages which house the most important motorsports figures in the world are inhabited by a flock of seagulls. On this day, however, one garage is teeming with activity. The Yoshimura Suzuki Superbike Road Race Team have rented the famed Speedway to test for America's most important race, the Daytona 200. Together with the Michelin Tire Company of France, they will try to set up the Suzuki Superbike's engine, suspension, and tires for the big race in March. In a sport where hundredths of a second can spell the difference between victory or defeat, the bottom line is obvious to all. Of course, it's a lifetime. 
and uh, and, and uh, I, I know how fast you have to go to win the you know, next year's Daytona, and uh, so that's that I would like to see, and as well as uh, you know engine's performance, you know top speed and and such. Whether it's racing or testing, circulating this high-speed Daytona track is risky business. No one knows that better than the tire companies. These fellas don't have roll bars. They have two tires and not four. And when they go down or into the arm coal or a concrete retaining wall, their protection is their helmet and their leathers, which is minimal. And every time you check a tire pressure, every time you mount a tire, that man's life is in your hands. Texan Kevin Schwantz, second place in last year's Daytona 200, and Japanese Formula One champion Satoshi Sujimoto are the riders who have placed their well-being in Michelin's hands. History tells us a win at Daytona brings instant recognition to rider and team. The list of Daytona winners read like a who's who in racing. But what would a victory mean to a tire company like Michelin? Well, it would mean a tremendous amount of publicity uh, for Michelin, uh, basically for our salespeople. And of course for us, on a technical uh, basis, uh, it would also be a win, meaning that everybody has done his work right. As always, the stopwatch is the ultimate judge. After two days of on-track deliberation, the verdict? Suzuki will be in the hunt in March. Reporting for Motor World, this is Dennis Torres. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Motor World, and please join us next Sunday. Motor World will be a part of TNN's Sports Sunday lineup every week. Each edition will air four times at 11 a.m., 5 p.m., 9 p.m., and 2 a.m. Eastern Time, fitting just about anyone's Sunday schedule. So make it a point to join us each and every week right here on the Nashville Network. In the weeks to come, we'll have the opening round of the Supercross season, off-road action, rider interviews, special features, and much, much more. If you have any motorcycle events, Events or personalities you would like to see on Moto World, or if you would like to nominate a Castrol Rider of the Week, drop us a line at Moto World, P.O. Box 490099, Atlanta, Georgia 30349. That's Moto World, P.O. Box 490099, Atlanta, Georgia 30349. Until next time, keep your wheels on the ground and your feet on the pegs. For Moto World, I'm Larry Myers. World has been brought to you by Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. Honda motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles. Honda, follow the leader. Nissan, who invites you to test drive the new Go Anywhere Nissan Pathfinder at your Nissan dealer now. Fram Autolite, the makers of Fram oil filters and Autolite spark plugs. Suzuki, makers of the 1987 Quad Runners. Right on, Suzuki. And by Castrol, motor oil engineered for today's smaller, higher revving engines.